welcome to What The Phone Podcast, this is episode two, and you're joined by me, Amy. Uh, me, Nick. And today we have our special guest, who is now waving at me. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name's James Beattie, and that is my name. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say, uh, how do we know James? Yeah, you, really, so right? I was thinking about this today, so it was a really weird story. I worked in a bar, like, it was literally about six years ago, by uh, the way. Really, six years yeah, ago? Yeah, six years ago. And you came up to me and asked me to take a photo of you and your friends. This is going to get awkward. So really, Amy, my girlfriend was working in a bar. And <laughs> so James approached her uh, with the uh, goal of chatting her up. No, he wanted a photo. No. It was a great picture. Right. You just framed. thought she looked like a natural photographer. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just became friends from that. And yeah, you're really into your travelling. So do you want to tell us in your entire life, just list off oh, oh, blimey. where you've been. I've been very uh, fortunate to travel and see the world. It's my big passion, I'd say. Uh, this year I, I did South America. I flew into Buenos Aires, Argentina. Nice. And then made my way up to Uruguay and up to Brazil. And then I made my way to uh, Bolivia, uh, then to Peru, up to Colombia. And then I flew into Miami to finish the trip. Insane. In style. Yeah. Nice. So before that, you did some travelling, right? You went around Asia. Yeah, I've done uh, some amazing parts of Asia. I think Asia is a great place to start when you, you go travelling. It's definitely yeah. it's really really easy to travel around there, and it's sort of geared towards travelling in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, South America is maybe I wouldn't say tougher, but less touristy in that sense. It's more you're sort of on your own a little bit more. Yeah, you definitely. It seems like you need a <clears> bit of experience. Like yeah. um, one of my good friends travelled there with her boyfriend, and they'd been pretty much everywhere before going there. And even they found it a bit tough. Like, um, I don't want to like warn people away from South America, but they did get mugged and yeah. a few things happened, which I think you could very easily break down if you hadn't been. You've been caught by like all the Asian. Yeah, um, I had all the Asian scams, so yeah. I was kind yeah. of a little bit more street well, streetwise, is maybe not the right word, but I was a bit more prepared. Yeah, but I, but I probably got ripped off more in Asia than I did in South America. But maybe that's um, just experience, I suppose. But yeah. I found South America really safe. Mm-hmm. Everyone was worried and family. Oh, let us know where you are, and yeah. I found it really safe. I found it really fine. Would you say? I mean, we'll go into more depth later. But would you say South America? You could do on your own with a tour group, with a friend. What, what would you recommend in general for the continent? Um, I think you could do it uh, alone, definitely. Yeah. I think hostels are such a great hub. You meet so yeah. many great people. Yeah, of course. Um, I think Asia was maybe a little bit of a younger crowd, more. First time backpackers. Yeah, very young, very sort of like... They want to drink and stuff like that. England abroad, a bit like Mali and Magaluf, in that sense a little bit. Whereas South America was definitely a lot uh, more of an older type of person now, I'd say. Yeah. Um, More more mid mid to late 20s, I'd say. But yeah, both great parties and stuff. It wasn't the same party scene as as Asia and Thailand. You know, Mm -hmm. you're in Peru, there's like, in Cusco, there's maybe two nightclubs. Really? Yeah. And you choose between... Are they good nightclubs, though? Well, we're, I'm a cliche traveller. Every English person's in there asking for Oasis, you know? <laughs> you travel halfway across the world, and there it, you are. It sounds, you say, two nightclubs for the whole, is that city? It's, that's in Cusco, yeah, in, in the Cusco. city. But yeah, they've got like a main square in the in the city, and um, yeah, there's just basically two main clubs. I think Kosan Road in Bangkok has got more than that, just on one street. Yeah, ex- yeah 100%. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a mad place. I'm not sure if I actually, uh, if I'm a fan of that, it's too... Uh... Too crazy. I mean, that's yeah. incredible, isn't it? You can walk down a road and eat a scorpion and then you're in the middle yeah. of a nightclub and you're on the back of the tuk-tuks. Oh, that's the thing. It's brilliant. I love mm. Thailand. It's like the Asian Vegas, Bangkok, I think. Mm. It is, yeah. And, like, it really is like a... What's the film called? The Hangover. Um, yeah. It yeah. really is like that. You just don't know what's <laughs> going to happen in Bangkok. And yeah, then... I love those films. <laughs> they are really good. <laughs> so you've done South America, Asia. Where did you go in Asia? So Thailand? Uh, I flew into Singapore and I did Malaysia, uh, Indonesia... Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and then obviously Thailand. Okay, cool. And then in terms of the other parts of the world, have you done Australia, New Zealand? No, that's the one I haven't really done, actually. Oh, really? And um, how comes? Because like, normally people do Asia and then they'll go straight to Australia and do like the year abroad, do all the working bit. That is that true. That interest you? It does, yeah. It's just a lot of people said it was just like England abroad, really. Um, okay. And uh, I've heard it's very expensive. I've got a lot of friends who've lived there and, and travelled there. I thought that, I don't know, just for me personally, I'd... I'd love to go, mm-hmm. but it just there's always somewhere else I'd prefer to go in the meantime. Yeah, before okay. From two people, we have both been to Australia and New Zealand. Your thoughts about Australia, I'd actually say are quite accurate, actually. Yeah. I would recommend anyone go, yeah. but yeah, it wasn't the travel experience that Asia is and what I think South America will be yeah. when, when we do go eventually. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you know this anyway, but we've done um, most of Asia, 
Then we did Australia, New Zealand, and then we went over to do India and Nepal. Oh, wow. Which, by the way, was the best trip of our entire lives. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to India? No, that's next on the list. I that's feel the, like yeah. this would be your perfect that's experience. That's the place to go. It, our plan is when we're old and retired, we're going to buy a house in India, wow. which we can holiday in. But the rest of the year, we want like an Indian family to live there, give them like a free house. That that's is so the plan. Nice. But yeah, no, you'll love India. But yeah, going back to Australia, New Zealand, it wasn't a bad trip at all. Like, no, obviously you're traveling, it's amazing. Oh, of course, but yeah. it was definitely our least favorite. Yeah, but I think it's a great place. For a lot of my friends went and you don't have to learn any languages. You know, I'm there yeah, with a phrase exactly. book trying yeah. to speak Spanish. Yeah, but that's good. Uh, which that's I, like, I enjoy. Yeah, but a lot of people don't really like doing that kind of thing. They see it as effort, but yeah, yeah no, completely. Work. And you can't eat guinea pig in Australia. <laughs> no. <laughs> Frowned upon or? Slightly. Um, <laughs> but you can eat kangaroo and crocodile. Kangaroo. Oh, have you eaten kangaroo? No. That is one of the best meats I've ever eaten. What is it? Really? What does it taste though? It's like a, I'd say it's a mix of duck and lamb. (laughs) Uh, I I I remember it being just a real kind of luxurious steak. Like, I'm sure you tell us in uh, Argentina you've had a a pretty good steak, but Uh, kangaroo was just delicious. Really? Apparently they take it from, so if you think of a kangaroo, what part of the animal was it? It was like the leg. It's all muscle. But the thigh or something like that, because it's like the strongest part of the animal, and it it was amazing. Delicious. So uh, now that we've summed up where you've been in the world, we are going to, and I think you're going to be quite good at this, we're going to play the Capitals game. Yes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got a 30-second timer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read them out to you. You have to give me the capital city of that country. I'm going to read you out as many as possible, and every guest that comes on, their score is going to be compared to Nick's from the first episode, okay? Pressure. I'm pretty right, good. There's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so you've got 30 seconds. Nick managed to get through and get correctly. We said nine, but then when I listened back, we got it wrong. It was ten. Nice. Yes, justice okay. has been done. Okay. So I'm going to start the 30-second timer. I'm ready. Are you nervous? Yeah, very. <laughs> I'm nervous for you. <laughs> okay, right. America. Washington, D.C. Sri Lanka. Pass. Uh, Cambodia. Uh, Phnom Penh. Indonesia. Jakarta. No, that's Philippines. Oh. I know this. Quick, quick, quick. Young pass, 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 pass. Uh, Argentina. Uh, Buenos Aires. India. Uh, it's New Delhi. Congo. Pass. Nepal. Pass. Poland. Krakow. Kenya. Ooh, Nairobi. Oh, nice. Yes. Wow, that is tough. It's tough, isn't it? Should we give him Nairobi? <laughs> hang, on, hang on, Indonesia. Hang on. What, what you, is... you, you said three quarters of it. You had it. You just didn't finish it. Jakarta. Jakarta. Which one? Is so, it Philippines? I counted. That was only four. Oh, that's awful, isn't uh, it? Are you counting in Nairobi? Uh, no, I missed it. If we count Nairobi, then that'll be five. But the, the time was Do you was think up. you missed it? The time was up. Was it? Oh, I, must, I, must have done, I must have done like seven it, seconds. It's not as if it was close to me, though, was it? But uh, okay. well, yeah, we'll give you that. You, you got <laughs> All five. Right. Get you got, you got five. Over here. I must, okay, you I must have done about seven seconds on. Uh, okay, shall I run through them with you? So, America, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., yeah. You always think New York, don't you? Instinctively. Yes, exactly. Sri Lanka is Colombo. Did you get that one right? No. Um, Cambodia, Phnom Penh, yeah. or Phnom Penh. Indonesia is Jakarta. Argentina is Buenos Aires. India is New Delhi. Congo is, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Brazzaville. 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 Like Nepal restaurant. is Kathmandu. Poland is Warsaw. <coughs> and Kenya. Oh, Warsaw. Yeah. What did I say? Krakow? Um, yeah, it's yeah, Krakow, yeah. Krakow, yeah. Warsaw. Yeah. Uh, Kenya was Nairobi. But well done. So I'm going to write down your score. And we're going to put you again. Yeah, it's that's great, a good game. That, when that's going in your ear, though, it's the pressure. Yeah, yeah. I know. The 30 seconds. Yeah. When you watch TV and you see people on the game show, you think, what's wrong with this? <laughs> it's it's obvious. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Cool. Okay, so now it's the long-awaited time for Nick. We are going to do Nick's geeky facts about Peru. You've been so excited about this. I've and... been preparing for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Got a nice bit of music as well to keep this all game showy. Peru is a country in Western South America. It is bordered by Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia and Chile. Chili sauce and hot spices were banned from prison food in Peru in 1973 on the grounds that they might arouse sexual desires. Mm. Peru is an extremely biodiverse country with habitats ranging from arid plains to the peaks of the Andes to the tropical Amazon basin rainforests. The Spanish Empire conquered the region in the 16th century. Peru then claimed independence on July 28, 1821. Peru is the only country whose name in English can be typed on a single row of a normal keyboard. 
The Peruvian population is estimated at 30.4 million. Spanish is spoken by 84.1% of the population and Quechua by 13%, while other languages make up the remaining 2.9%. Quechua was the language of the Inca Empire, which was destroyed by the Spanish in the 16th century. About 65 million guinea pigs are consumed in Peru every year. This local delicacy is known as Cui, I think. 81.3% <laughs> of the population over 12 years old describe themselves as Catholic. Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Incas, is by far the most popular tourist attraction and one of the wonders of the world. Peru is the world's largest exporter of asparagus, with 117,000 metric tonnes sent in 2012. Wow, educational. I think there's a few uh, pronunciation issues. <laughs> Kui, kichua, Some interesting, whatever. interesting kichua, facts. Kui. And you know what we mean. Let's, uh, let's get serious here for a second, kids, because okay. we like to try and be uh, informative to people. So uh, I would say, depending on where in the world you live, check your government website before travelling Peru for advice. <laughs> According to the UK government, gov.uk, Peru has all the usual travel dangers, pickpockets, etc. But overall is safe. 56,000 Brits visit Peru every year. Most have no problem. Lovely. I'm very fortunate to be one of those people. You are one yeah, of them. Good. You are indeed. So do you feel like you learnt a lot there? I did. That's really interesting, actually. I, I, uh, I knew about the guinea pigs. One of my friends had one in a, in a restaurant one, uh, one night. He wanted to try it. So he did, but you didn't? I'd had a little taste of his, but... Um, what did it taste like? It's like really... It was a lot like chicken. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more chewy. I'm surprised by that. I thought it would be like a dark meat. Like a pork? Yeah. yeah. Pig, guinea pig? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. But it, they present it literally... They just cut it in half and present it as a guinea pig. Oh, so it looks like one of those. Lying just straight Child flat on its stomach, with oh. its head, with an apple, apple in its mouth. So it's like a hog yeah. roast on a mini plate. Pretty much, yeah. The, the locals just love it. It's like, yeah. do you know? Do you know why? Is it because the taste is? Is it because they're cheap to get or to farm? Do you know what it is? Or I not? think it's a, a factor of all of those things, really. But I just think they must just love the taste. It's just cultural. They've just yeah. obviously grown up with it and. Mm. They love it. It's great. Well, I guess it's the same as us eating chicken or anything like that. We don't think that's weird anymore because well, yeah. we've grown up in this culture. Lots of parts of the world, eating beef is a, a yeah. complete no-go, yeah. but mm. we love it. If we want to treat ourselves, we go for a steak, don't we? In this country. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But I think our food is packaged in a certain way, so it doesn't look like the animal you're eating. Correct. That's very true. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not too keen on fish. So I think that does look like a fish. It smells like fish. You know you're eating a fish. Yeah, yeah. especially so... it comes out with a full head on as well. Oh. You can see its eyes looking at you. Blech. Yeah, that's what I mean, and that's how it is in Peru, because they have, you can just see the, the whole animal, really. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move on, and we want to know some in-depth stories about Peru, basically. Oh, wow. Okay. Is there any picture on your Instagram, because we definitely stalked your Instagram, your trip looked amazing. <laughs> oh, to be okay. honest, your your photos in Bolivia just looked yeah. unbelievable. So when you was at the Salt Flats, do you want to explain a bit about the Salt yeah, Flats? Yeah, the Salt Flats are just absolutely incredible, but for me, the whole thing about travelling is that people make a place, you know? For me, if you could go to the Great place in the world if you have good company it just enhances it so much and Absolutely. I was really lucky I met a really good group of lads and we traveled together but they were in a real rush because they wanted to get up to Cuba so we did Bolivia in in such a short amount of time mm. and what are you calling short time like a week pretty okay. much mm -hmm. and we obviously did the salt flats but you're 5,000 meters above sea level so a couple wow, of the lads okay. got altitude sickness oh and, I didn't um, realize it was that high yeah one minute you're looking at a, a volcano and the next minute you're on the the world's biggest salt flats. Wow. Um, and our driver kindly took us to an area that was deserted. And uh, You were on like a train or something, wasn't you? Yeah, we were. the photos. And like an old broken down Oh, yeah. That was that at the salt flats? That was just before the salt flats. Yeah. They used to use that to transport materials and then they changed their route. So they just literally abandoned all these trains just in the middle of like what seems like desert. Mm. So it's kind of a touristy thing. They take you there first and you get loads of pictures and stuff. And we were... No. We were like a boy band, really, the five yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You all like posing on the train it's Olivia really funny so we were making boy band <laughs> album covers nice. and we got to the salt flats and, we, and it's so cheesy but we're like we're here now we're gonna have to make a boy band video so we made one no way. yeah honestly <gasps> can we uh like on our, we through our social this? media can we post a link to that video i we haven't put it on i haven't put it online one of the oh, lads was like you could, that's so embarrassing you can't oh, put that on facebook no. oh i want to well, see to this to the listeners we will try we'll, we're we'll gonna try to i would it. love to i think it's <laughs> one of the things that maybe could go viral because we're like a good group of lads 
guys, but we're just messing around. But yeah. it seems kind of semi serious. Mm-hmm. But everyone I've shown it to has laughed. I'll show you it. And nice. Oh, man. I'm I so hope... excited to see this. Yeah. So the basalt flats were incredible. And yeah. then we went from Bolivia to Peru. And the border crossing is it's not like the airport. You're literally just crossing a road, and there's just like a little hut where yeah. you show your passport. And no one's in uniform. Mm-hmm. Like, no. And they have. With like, what we've experienced, anyway. They have a, a TV in the background with Cartoon Network on. <laughs> It's just so, surreal. Like, yeah, and you're like <laughs> handing your passport over to these people and you're thinking, oh my God, what are they going to do with my passport? It's, while it's while you're watching scary. Spongebob. A hundred percent. It's the really surreal. But when you go in, you get like a, a paper documentation and two of the lads had lost theirs. So Two of your friends. You yeah, know, two the of the guys. lads we were with out of the five yeah. of us. So we all got on the, the bus basically drops you off. You go through and then the bus carries on and you, you basically climb back aboard. And the drivers don't speak any English. So mm. they're trying to, they wanting to go. And two of the lads are having this argument with the guy, like trying to get through. And then they have to run back to another place. And the driver's trying to leave. So the, what could we do? So we just stood in front of the bus so it couldn't move. And the oh driver's just God. trying to run us over. <laughs> Oh and um, this is insane. Yeah, it was crazy. So we, uh, that all, that's all we could do because otherwise yeah. we'd be there and we'd be stranded. Oh my god! Cause, you know, that's, there's you no. You don't want to hang around there. a border either. Like this, they're like the dodgiest places. Not a nice place. When we just went to India, I think it was named like one of the worst drug exporting. Really? Like, um, Nepal to India. Yeah, like the border was really dangerous, and we went there, and it was just like it's like hell on earth. It literally really? was like hell. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we were with a tour guide. Like we put a stack of our passports together, and our tour guide just handed it over to the, some guy in no uniform and he just walked off with them oh wow and I'm standing there freaking out and I was like why is no one else freaking out this guy's just taken about 30 passports with him we don't know where he's gone he's not wearing any uniform but I just think but if you haven't travelled before you need to know that kind of stuff and yeah. just so you don't freak out straight away it's just totally different so mm. we were panicking we didn't know what to do so I was trying to just buy time so I said oh we have to get our bags off so then we were pretending we couldn't find our bags and it was right at the back and we were just <laughs> buying more time and the lads come running down this hill way in and cheering and yeah. we jumped wow. we jumped on the bus and everyone on the bus cheered everyone was on our side really yeah and we said what'd you do and they, they had no money either so they said oh we i know, I know this is a strange thing but you just what have are you to bribe tell us now <laughs> you just have to bribe them so okay we'd all run out of what money did because they do? <laughs> we, yeah <laughs> they had to go into these toilets right right no, I'm <laughs> so they they had to bribe them so they came back and they're like how much money have you got them you're obviously on a budget when you're traveling so yeah. you work out how much you need to get out of the atm for what you need for that week so we'd kind of all spent our money before we went so we were walking up and down the bus asking complete strangers and then people were so kind you know in moments like that were giving us um we gave you money people you know, you know the bus what, were giving us money, money. no they were, they were all tourists oh okay and then obviously they ran back up paid and then came back down and that's the one thing i've worked out in the world if i've been yeah. pulled over on a motorbike in indonesia or cambodia you can bribe your way out of most things yeah, yeah. you can i mean i couldn't imagine that stance did <laughs> <laughs> that no. is so true here's a 50 pound note let me in oh go on then but Hey, isn't that nice that all the other tourists help you out? Yeah, really nice. Really good, yeah. Yeah. I think there were people from all over the world, were they? All over the world. And I mean, people are just so nice. People are so great. Everywhere yeah. you go. And like I say, we, we left the salt flats and we came into uh, Peru. And uh, then we got to a, a bus stop. And when you travel, people want to hear these great, amazing stories. But I find the funniest stories are when you get on a 24-hour coach journey. And yeah. you've eaten something 10 minutes before that makes oh, you no. ill. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you did? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a story for so another day. That maybe. happened. That did happen, didn't it? In Cambodia, all the way to Bangkok, 24 hours. And I was just <gasps> ill for 24 hours. Was there a toilet on the bus? No. I had to pull over like ten times. By the end, I'm just at the side of the uh, the side of the road <laughs> every time, wow. just with a bottle of water. And in the end, like the driver just had a camera phone. He was just taking pictures of me. <laughs> Wow. No way. Like so the, the first time I'd go around the back of the bus and kind of hide. Like the tenth time, I was like, I just don't care anymore. Without uh, being too vile, is this coming from the top end or the bottom end? Both. <laughs> oh god. The top end first, and I was into a into a plastic bag. They give you a plastic bag for your shoes because heaven forbid you'd make a mess with your shoes or whatever. So. <laughs> I did it in a bag and I was asking him to pull over and he didn't speak any English and he, w- he refused. So I was just sticking a bag and just waved it at him and he pulled over. Oh, no. 24 hours, yeah. I'll never forget that. Wow. But that's the story I tell my friends because I come back and a few of my friends haven't travelled and they don't want to hear the time I was sitting on a beach drinking a mojito. No, <laughs> they that's so true. <laughs> a lot of people think who haven't been think travelling here is all glamorous and actually mo- I'd say most of the time it's not. <laughs> but then yourself, when you look back on trips, fortunately you remember all the good Oh, things. you remember all the great things. And then yeah, you, yeah, you forget about the horrible, uncomfortable bus journeys and uh, mm. boat journeys, yeah, being seasick and everything. There is a lot of... Uh, Definitely. R- there's not a glamorous side to it. Sure. My favourite travel quote is 
is traveling is only glamorous in retrospect. Yeah, hundred percent. Which is true. Completely. Hundred <laughs> percent. It really is. But we got into Peru. We went into Cusco, and the lads, because they were in a bit of a rush, they wanted to book Machu Picchu as quick as possible. So we booked that, and then uh, got into a really nice hostel. And I think that's the most important thing: getting into good hostels where there's you, a good. You can name the hostel. Uh, you was, remember? Of course, it's the Wild Rover in oh, Cusco, right. and it's actually was voted while we're out there one of the top ten Irish pubs uh, outside of Ireland. Oh wow! In okay. the world, that's yeah. Pretty good so, so I ended up staying there for St. Patrick's Day and it's Irish Oh, owned. nice. Great. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. And we I'm went... guessing they celebrated it there then. Oh, with, oh, like you've never seen. Really? I've never seen a party like that. It was a great atmosphere. They had a band, music. Oh, uh, drinks were flowing. And uh, the owner's Irish, Colm, loveliest man I've ever met. It really made everyone feel welcome. He refused, you know, anyone to buy him a drink on St. Patrick's Day. He's buying everyone drinks. He's wow. a really, really nice Aww. guy. And we went hurling the day before. What's Which hurling? is like a, an Irish sport, really, really popular. It's a bit like... Like, uh, how could I describe it without offending anyone who's Irish? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like a, a, a hurling stick, which is a bit like a hockey stick, I would say. Just, right, okay. Um, oh, is and this a really where hard ball. It? Yeah. With it, like a net. And Yeah, it's a bit like oh, Aussie rules mean. in a way. It's like a cross between the two, but it's very, very violent. People coming out with cuts, bruises, broken bones, whacking each other with the hurls. So you can just to, to get the ball back, you can just whack each other. So the day before St. Patrick's Day, they all went up to this huge hill in the top of Cusco, overlooked the whole city. We were hurling, and I was the only English lad there. Yeah. And they were giving me some stick. You do a uh, shot of Jaeger and then you hit the hurl. And they were like, if you hit it further than any of these Irish boys. Oh my God. So we had a, I had a really great time. It really made you feel welcome. And there's three Wild Rovers in uh, South America. So I did the threesome. My only threesome of my life. But... Uh, <laughs> to, to date. Yeah, <laughs> to date, um, yeah. That's great. Can you just tell us a bit more about so Cusco? It's a city. Is that right? Town, yeah, city, yeah, city, really? yeah. Is that like the gateway to the, to the Inca Trail and then Machu Picchu or not? What's the situation? Yeah, I would say. So, it's, I mean, it's the main big city. You still have to get a four or five hour coach journey to Machu Picchu, but that's okay. basically their London, really. And there's a main square. There's some really beautiful architecture without sounding... Uh Oh, this is good. Oh, that's yeah. good. We want to know everything about it. And so. um, culturally, it's amazing. I love the people. And uh, all the women wear these, these crazy bowler hats. There yeah. was a guy like 100 years ago, an English guy who went out there to trying to sell bowler hats. Oh, wow. And no one bought them and no one liked them. Mm. So he spread this rumour that they helped fertility and women get pregnant. Really? Wow. So only women wear them. So you just see like... That's still amazing. To this day. Yeah, so you see like wow. women so cool. wearing bowl, loads of women wearing bowler hats. Never see guys. So um, wow. what I've, <laughs> from what I've seen... Um, why are you laughing at that? Oh, well, I just assume so. All the women want to get pregnant, but... Oh, all the guys don't. All the blokes aren't. I mean, the men want to get pregnant, but... <laughs> <laughs> so what I've heard of South America from seeing, like, different programmes and stuff is a very sexual-based continent in terms of, like, they're just obsessed with sex and gods and... Would you count Cuba into this or is that more sent? Well, Cuba is, Cuba is central, but they might have the same attitudes. But yeah. I think what you're talking about, is that more Brazil, Argentina or the whole of well, South yeah, America? Well, yeah, so, like, the programmes that I've seen, that just everything in their culture is based around sex like in Cuba especially they worship a lot of gods that are sex gods and they give them <laughs> offerings and stuff in uh, rumba dances and stuff like that but the programs that I've seen that even down to um, you know how we have like drive-in restaurants yeah, yeah, yeah did you know or have you experienced where they have like drive-in sex brothel <laughs> No, no. Like, so. Oh, to go with a partner. So it's really disrespectful if you live with your parents to bring your boyfriend over oh, and sleep okay. in their yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. So if I live with my parents and um, Nick was coming over, we'd go out in the car. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Um, we'd go out in the car. Bowler. <laughs> um, and we'd go into, like, look, kind of looks like a car park, but with curtains around the bays. So you park your car. You no put way. The, yeah, you put your curtain round and then you sleep together in the car and then you leave, but you pay, like, an hourly fee or something. Well, you could rent um, in Columbia. You're uh, like a friend of mine. Oh friend. yeah. Okay. Now you can and, and Argentina and Brazil, you can rent hotels for like by the hour. Yeah. So there's a lot of sex hotels out there and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but, but... I, look, I look like this, so. <laughs> 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 Didn't work out for you then. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm on the radio, not TV. <laughs> the face for radio, but um, yeah, I think uh, Brazil and Argentina, yeah, they're very uh, free loving. Is that the right yeah. way of putting it? I think that's a good thing, and like a lot of their food is kind of based around oh, what will give you um, your like, libido a kick. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I've just seen a lot of that. Is that what it's like but, when you're there? Is it kind of hitting your face? I would say so. Yeah, Rio Carnival. Um, it's a lot of they have competitions on how many people they can kiss in a day, and they don't okay. see that as cheating. So a girl would kiss, th oh, I went to Rio Carnival today and I kissed 30 guys, but they have a boyfriend and then the boyfriend comes home and says, oh, I kissed 40 girls. Really? And that's so strange. It's so yeah. bizarre. For us, it, it seems a bit bizarre. And the, but the guys are very pushy and, and you know, those uh, girls on, you know, who are tourists who are like, oh, I just gave him a kiss and he left me alone. 
Now they weren't necessarily after anything more. It was more yeah. like more like a bit of a, a sport, if anything, yeah. Yeah. like a game. But yeah, they're very um, they wear their heart on their sleeves, definitely, without mm. a shadow of a doubt. And obviously, you know, maybe Australia's the same. Being on the beach every day, I suppose in England it's so cold, we're always covered up. Yeah. We don't have the same pressure on us. <laughs> Whereas yeah. they're living in bikinis. Yeah, Brazil is a certain areas. There's a place called Florinopolis, and it was very much about health. Is gyms on every corner it's about yeah. healthy eating healthy mm. drinking and they um, have this drink called acai which is like the nicest drink ever I think Innocent put them in one of their smoothies but they put like you know it's 1% acai whereas mm. you can get a pure acai it's like a super fruit that's grown in the Amazon oh, okay. and it's the most delicious super fruit ever what does it look like, like- it's purple okay. and they're like berries but they're so fresh out there that you have a smoothie and it's just the most delicious amazing Ooh. thing well, really we good a when we get there, then? sounds good yeah Very really good. good so yeah good eating good food and yeah the people are really great but Rio Carnival was wild. It's, I think, you know, like Notting Hill Carnival times 100, really. Yeah, I'm, mm, yeah, I'm sure imagine. it is, yeah. Can you tell us about, so you're in Cusco, you booked your trip to see Machu Picchu. What happened from then? Well, there's a few different options, actually. You, you can book the Inca Trail, which uh, takes four days. and um, To but, walk, but to you can walk. also get the train, right? Yeah, you can get the train. Um, there's lots of different packages. Because the lads were in a bit of a, I was with it, were in a bit of a rush. We just got, um, we got a minibus to, uh, basically it was a power station, and then you walk five or six hours through to the a little town square at the bottom of Machu Picchu mm-hmm. right. and then you you stay there for the night and then you get up in the morning and do the 2,000 steps but you can get the train if you know yeah. Um, you didn't want to walk it but I enjoyed doing that it was a bit of a compromise for us but a lot of people did the Inca Trail but yeah. you have to book so far in advance the people I uh, spoke to who did do it that you have these Sherpas who look after you and they're yeah. carrying all these equipment all your luggage. oh yeah we, we had that in Nepal yeah they're it's incredible incredible, incredible I don't know guys. That we did a, a similar thing in Nepal we were walking the Annapurna mountains and I wouldn't consider myself unfit at all and at the time I was going to the gym a good four times a week and I was struggling because well when you're walking that length of time like a few, good few days your ankles start to hurt your feet and you get rods and stuff like that but they are literally carrying this R- weight did they head. put it over their head as well yeah incredible so you've got a, a bag on their back and the strap is going across their forehead they're kind of leaning forward to bring that weight up but these people are they've got a good 40-50 years on me I'm struggling with no luggage and they're just walking straight up oh they're amazing they, f- mm. they fly past you I mean these are friends who, who did the Inca Trail they fly past you they arrive they pitch up the tent they build all the whole place they cook you a meal and oh. you get there and they're like what time's this and they're just incredible wow. that's and amazing what, one of the people who went on a trip there was like a, a large American lady who was on the trip and she just gave up after the first day really so they carried her for three days they carried her <laughs> Are they kept over her shoulder. No, you're they joking. They all took it in turns for like two hours wow no I don't and, believe you and they're she walking along them like extra I uh, know she didn't tip them and everyone else did. She was the only what? one who didn't. Incredible, what? right? I'm sure she doesn't reflect most Americans. But oh, no, of course not. It's a one off story. But that's not wow. anything to do with when, when the people who went on that told me, I just shouldn't laugh. But it was just, it's just so audacious. It's incredible. That's, but yeah. that you're walking along basically cliff edges. You know, like, it's like yeah. out of Mission Impossible or James Bond film. <laughs> yeah. You literally, if you fall over there, it's game over. It's three, 300, 400 feet drop. Unbelievable. So I think they were saying how many people don't make it unfortunately oh, really? like, but tourists yeah a couple yeah. a year apparently but if you fall there's no rescue in you there's no helicopter or anything and no. so it's wow okay it's, so, a, it's a real achievement when you complete that yeah. I do feel like I would have liked to have done that but you have to book it so far in advance yeah. and we're five lads we're not organised no Fair enough. we what? just turned up but we so we got the minibus and, and um, we made our way up the 2000 steps in the morning and Machu Picchu is... now I was going to ask you I mean we've all seen pictures of Machu Picchu and I imagine it's going to be a bit like when I saw the Grand Canyon and I've seen pictures before I've seen pictures since I've been there and the pictures are rubbish compared to seeing the real thing you, you can't you can't get an idea of the distance and everything now I imagine you see the real thing and then ever since then, you look back on a picture, you think that picture must look shit. Like, yeah. Well, I imagine it was amazing. It was just incredible. It's the whole 360 degree view. Yeah. And oh, it's just, it is really takes your breath away. And we were very lucky it wasn't cloudy or anything. So we got a perfect view. I mean, the, the photos you see are of the one section, which is very, you know, incredible. But there's so much more to it. There's so yeah. many more areas that you don't really see in pictures. So it was amazing to walk around and you're very free. The guide takes you around for an hour and then it's up to you. You can stay as long as you want, really. But yeah. they let a certain amount of people in every 
day. Uh, it looked it was amazing. It really yeah. was amazing. A few of the lads had done a lot of walking, so they had a little sleep for an hour. Nice. Um, oh. And, you know, it was really nice. Yeah. You can just, there's a lot of grassed areas. And, um, yeah, we're really, really lucky to have seen that. Really, really nice. So um, I'm really happy that you said you can kind of do best of both worlds. So you got your mini bus up and then did a walk. Because from my understanding of just briefly looking over some of the trips, you could either walk it, which took like seven days, which most people don't have like time for. Like you said, you're in a rush. Or you get the train up. And I kind of wanted a middle ground. So that's perfect that you can Yeah, you, you can, can walk, walk half of it and, um, yeah, get the mini bus and it drop you at the power station, walk into the town and spend a night there and ex- kind of explore and do your own walk. But there's the 2,000 steps from the town up to Machu Picchu, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. And how you, long would that take? It took a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, a couple of hours. And you've got your big heavy rucksack. That would be my advice. Don't, t- you know, pack light. Yeah. yeah. And um, don't drink the night before. I drank like, Ooh. oh, yeah. I went to bed like two hours before we had to get up on the bus. No. And I was on the bus to Machu Picchu. Like, I got off oh, and I was throwing up. No. Such oh. an idiot. So, so it seems like you're just throwing up and doing other things while you're, you're traveling. I was such an idiot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can I just tell a funny story about Machu Picchu quickly? Because when, uh, years ago, when me and Amy first started to uh, start to get together, she, she happened to see uh, just this brochure I had in the house. I know what you're going to say now. I had this brochure <laughs> about the Inca Trail and Machu Picchu, and there's a big picture of Machu Picchu on the front. And she's like, oh, like, are you thinking about doing that? I was like, well, I'd like to go one day. And she took my look at it, and she goes, my house in Spain, we've got mountains like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to go all the way to uh, Peru to do that? I sound like I'm a 90 year old woman, don't I? I? I remember looking at that brochure and this was like, at this point, I did really want to travel. But I remember seeing it and just thinking, like back then I weren't really into exercise yeah. or walking or anything like that. I just thought, why would you want to walk for seven days to just see this view and then go home? Like I just couldn't understand it at all. When now, that would be like one of my favourite things to do. It would be like the highlight of my life. Um, but yeah. But it's funny, I, I know that. what you mean because yeah, your, your, your family do have a place in Spain and it is in the mountains it does look nice but it I looks ma- completely different I imagine it's got nothing on, uh, on... Machu Picchu yeah, absolutely sure. not um, right so what we're going to do is we're going to play a game called Money 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 then we're going to come back and talk a bit more about your Peru stories is that right? perfect thank you cool alright so Money 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 Nick has started a new game for this episode <laughs> and do you want to explain it Nick? yep okay so what we're going to do there's no time kind of constraints here but I've got 10 countries okay and you, well, you're going to take it in turns James I guess you'll go first because you're our guest. I'm going to read out 10 countries. You tell me the currency they use for their money. And then at the end, we'll see who's got the most correct. I think this is going to be so hard. I want my money, man. Uh, okay, <laughs> James. Are you ready? I'm ready. Brazil. Reage. Correct. Ooh. China. Is it yen? Nope. Oh. <gasps> I think not. Hungary. I've been to Hungary. I should know this, shouldn't I? I'm going to have just, to hurry you. I've oh, just been mate. so I know what that one is. That's wrong. Australia. <laughs> it's the Australian dollar, right? Yep. Mexico. Mexico. You press pan coronas, don't you? <laughs> 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 um, Mexico. It's got to be... Pes- is that potatoes? Mexican potatoes? No, no. South Africa. Mexican pesos. Uh, South Africa. Um, oh, this is tough, isn't Hard. it? Yeah. You're doing so much better than I would have. Not South African rupees. No. That's in rupees, India. Cambodia. And don't say dollars, because I know they prefer US dollars, but what's the real currency? Oh, my word. Oh, I've I, been there. I, I can't remember what it is. I know what it looks like. It's um, oh. Cambodian... Oh, I'm going to have to hurry you. Oh, Nick, no. No, put the pressure <laughs> on. on. Holland. Uh, that's your eyes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, wow. They're in I wouldn't have known of any the of banks. these. Um, Swiss franc? Yes. Finally, Egypt. I've been there as well. Um, Egypt. Oh, come on, Nick. No, you don't know? I don't. You've been there. You've been I know. there. Uh, is it um, Egyptian? I don't know. No, time's up. So, you got Brazil, right? Cambodia's the only one I'm disappointed not to get. You got Brazil, right? Real. China, Remnimbi. Rem Nimby. Rem Nimby. Where are you? Oh, that's a lethal weapon. Rem Have you Nimby. Been to China? You know? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Hungary. There's a tough one. It's foreign. Foreign. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Australia. Dollar. Mexico. Pesos. You, pesos. You, you did actually pesos. You did say it, but you, I'd already marked you wrong there. <laughs> oh, tough. South Africa is rand. Oh, I'd never got that. Cambodia. Riel. Real. Real. Oh, Real. Yeah. Reals. Yeah. Holland. Euro. Switzerland. Swiss franc. You got that right. And Egypt, interestingly, is the Egyptian pound. Ah. So one, two, three, four, correct. 
I'm, right. I'm not very good at this. No, I? you're <laughs> definitely better than me. I wouldn't have got any of those, except for the Euro one. I thought you might I'm have put actually... Peru on there. I knew that one. <laughs> Sorry. No Peru. <laughs> uh... Okay, right. It's my turn. I'm so, nervous. Amy, are you ready? Yep. So, let's go. USA. Um, dollars. Sweden. Um, You've been there. Oh, I have. Oh, God. She doesn't deal with the money, though. That's why. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, this is really uh, I'm going to have to hurry you. Um, Sweden. Mm. Oh, no, I wrong. Don't know. Germany. Oh. Um, Frank? No, no, no wrong. That's... I can only accept your first answer. Is it? Oh, no. Uh, is it yours? Indonesia. Oh, my God. I'm so bad at this game. Um, Indonesia. Indonesia. I've been there. Uh, I have to hurry you. No, <sighs> wrong. No, gone blank. Poland. Oh my god, I've been there twice. This is such bad radio because I'm just going, I've been there, but I don't know when it is. Um, oh, how are you? Uh, uh, wrong. Oh my god, I'm sorry. New Zealand. Like, if you looked inside my brain right now, it'd be playing white. <laughs> like, there's nothing else going on. No activity. What Was it New no, Zealand? New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand pounds. It's no. Like Nepal. Oh my god, this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. You can tell he has the bum bag. <laughs> he carries one of those bum bags. Okay. I'm going to let that one out the back. <laughs> I used to. I don't, I don't anymore. No, um, you don't know? What was the country again? Nepal. Nepal. Um, mm, no, oh, my God. In, no, oh, my God. Thailand. No. See, this is what I mean. I've gone completely blank. This is awful. Looking back, actually, I think she's had some quite easy ones. Yeah. Yeah, you, Thailand. Uh, they are easy. Thailand. No, Thai. Thai. Oh, um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. Thai. Main, main no, character in The Simpsons. Too long. Too long. Homer. No, Bart. Russia. Oh, Bart. Thai no, Bart. You got it wrong. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> Thanks, no, James. No, uh, Russia. Um, I think we should just stop because I'm not getting any. Come on, there's two more. Russia. Pa- Russian pounds. No. Moro- Russian dollars. Morocco. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing. No, you've got that wrong as well. So. Oh my God, this that, is so you've embarrassing. You've got one correct answer. It was USA dollar. Sweden is krona, Germany euro. How did you get that wrong? Uh, I thought it was a trick you question. Said Frank. Indonesia. What was what is Frank? Ru- is that? In- <coughs> French. Huh? It's it, Frank. Old French money. Yeah, yeah. Indonesia rupiah. Rupi- Poland zloty. Ah, oh, zloty. I knew that. New Zealand dollar. Nepal rupee. Same as India. Thailand baht. Russia ruble. And Morocco dirham. Dirham. That was awful. I'm embarrassed. I might cut that out. <laughs> but I think we've all learnt a lot. <laughs> you can re-edit it. You got it all right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when you leave, I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna say <laughs> all of them on the mic, and then I'll just slot them in. Slot so in the answers. Perfect. So James got four. Amy got one. Did I get one? I thought I got none. You got USA. Oh, dollar. Wow. Well That's done. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's uh, let's move on there. Okay. So we want to hear some Peru stories, as this is a Peru special. Tell us some stuff. So I was talking earlier about the World Rover. Amazing hostel. And where was that again? In Cusco? In Cusco, yeah. yeah. There's one in Arequipa um, and one in La Paz in Bolivia as well. But yeah, Cusco is definitely my favourite. Great place to stay. I'd recommend it. It's one of those things, there's always crazy things that happen in a hostel, whether it be someone in the bunk opposite me is pulled and I've got to sleep with headphones in tonight. <laughs> or um, what do I listen to? I no? just drank some water at the very wrong time there. <laughs> what do you listen to when someone's doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Rock the Casbah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I so, want to have sex on the beach, baby. And I'm just there, alone, <laughs> listening. I'm not, just don't want to listen. All by <laughs> myself. <laughs> you think it'd be sexy. Oh, that'd be sexy. They're doing it over there. But really, yeah. you're like, no. that's not sexy. It's disgusting. No. <laughs> How dare you do that around me? And the smell. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So there was one night where I was just in bed, everyone was sleeping, and, and the, the door opened, and this guy came in absolutely so drunk. And there's uh, lockers at one side of the room, and he fell into them, so it basically woke everyone up. Yeah. And you just heard, like, a tap switch on. Oh. So the first thing I do is reach for my phone, and I turn the torch on, mm. and I can just see this guy just pissing on the floor. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so what's the first thing you would do? Screen? Hopefully the first thing I would do. Take the light off, put my camera on, Flash. <laughs> nice. Yes. We've got to get some pictures here. So you do um, have the did you get did you get successful? I, I pictures? got a picture, yeah. yeah. And that guy is surely a grower, not a shower. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um yes, you have to really zoom in. But um <laughs> so I took the so picture. So did you know this guy was a stranger? Never met him. Never okay. met him at all. So someone switched the light on was and there was a few girl in our room who was going absolutely mad screaming at him and he was like, Don't worry about it, just go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. She goes, The room stinks. 
<laughs> so we went down to, uh, I said, go down to reception. It says, any problems, great hostel, any problems, go down to reception and uh, we'll sort anything out for you immediately, which is like really good. Mm. So she went down to reception and a guy came up with a towel and just stood on it and walked around the room. Uh. Oh, no. Uh, so we went back down and then um, the owner came up and he mopped it up. He's good as gold. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was pretty hilarious. That went on in one hostel. But, um, so how many people were in your room at the time? It would have been... Uh, I think and the guy-to-girl ratio as well. What was that? There's girl dorms in every hostel. So yeah. a lot of the times girls travel together and they're, they have their own rooms. But I think there was 10 in that room. And there'd have been three girls, maybe. Ah, oh, so quite a lot then. Uh, the girl was really nice. She was from Israel, so we couldn't go back to sleep after that. So we just sat talking about oh, our, our own pissing. countries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. When did you piss yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it was on a bus, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you said, you were just up all night talking. I don't know if you found this. Sometimes for us, when we've been travelling, the best nights have been in a hostel, group of people, yeah. few drinks, 100%, just chat. Yeah, hundred percent. You, know, you don't have to go out anywhere. Just stay in, chat, and you do meet some really interesting characters. Really amazing people. People. It's amazing how you go to the other side of the world and just meet people that are so similar to you. You can just yeah. And this oh, you're all there for the same reason, aren't you? Of course. And you can get on with everyone in the world. Everyone's got something in common, whether it's music or you know anything. So it's really great to meet different people and and especially when you can meet someone, travel together for a few weeks, and then you go your separate ways and you meet another group of people. Yeah. But I think there are certain uh, hostels that work as hubs where there was one in uh, Millhouse in Argentina in Buenos Aires. I mean, they must have had four or 500 people staying there. Whoa. And the rest of the trip, you'd see someone on the beach in Brazil. Oh, you were staying at that hotel, you know, yeah. at that hostel, sorry. So you, there's certain hostels that are really very sociable, mm. more sociable than others. So that was really good. But I, we left there and I did Peru hop after Cusco because that's when uh, the group of lads I was with all left. So I was on my own again. And I thought it's a great way to meet people. And what is Peru hop? Peru hop is basically a bus service and you can hop on and hop off and it goes to different places in Peru and you just let them know the day before when you want to go on and when you want to stay. Nice. And is it so, expensive? Uh, it's very, pretty reasonable. It's about 100, 120 quid, I think. And can you jump on and off as much as you like? Yeah, as long as you give them a bit of notice. But I was making my way up to Lima because I wanted to fly to Iquitos, uh, which is the largest place in the world you can't get to by road. You have to, it's wow. in the Amazon rainforest. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, I've definitely heard of Iquitos. So I was really wanting to go there and uh, I went after, I went on Peru Hop after St. Patrick's Day, so I'd done a lot of drinking and stuff. And I decided to go on a, a real detox and flush everything out. I went veggie, no salt, no sugar, oh, wow. um, no alcohol, uh, no sex, part of the detox. <laughs> <laughs> which was easy yeah I was going to say <laughs> just another week no. um, so I made my way and I got on the Peru hot bus and I, was, I had this sex band because I was going into the jungle to do some medicines and, and whatnot. Wow. So um, I get on, I thought, oh, it's the male to female ratio is predominantly like any nightclub in England. It's going to be 70% male. Yeah. Yeah. 70, 60% creepy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Me included. No, I'm joking. Not me included. Well, let's, let's remind ourselves. How did Amy meet you again? Ah, <laughs> what a photo. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. So you, leave me alone now. I'm working. So with, I'm sorry. So with the Amazon rainforest, it's actually me, actually. It's a place... I don't really want to go. I think it's just all the uh, all the creatures and all the scary things that live there. To be honest, well, how did you find? I think that's the most like amazing that? place I've ever been. It's really? the heartbeat of the world, really. Yeah, oh, wow. um, yeah. So it keeps the world going, right? Hundred percent. It's mm. the air is so fresh, and I've never really been like a. A massive nature lover, you know. I wear clothes on the beach and stuff, but for me, it was the most incredible thing. And to fly over the rainforest and just look down, yeah, amazing. Uh, you have to look closely. You think it's the ocean. It's so vast. Mm. And it's just so intense. So I made my way up through the Peru hot bus. And I got on this bus with my six band, and there's 24 beautiful girls on the bus. You just nice. can't believe it. <laughs> and I, met, I met a great girl. We had instant chemistry. We we're making each other laugh for eight hours, and she, I managed to convince her to leave her two friends she's travelling with. Really? We went out to uh, Paracas, um, which was amazing. It was, you know, we went on like a a boat and it's like a bit of an animal sanctuary which is really really amazing and we went to Wakachina which is like an oasis in the middle of a desert mm -hmm. so it's complete desert and then there's just a big river in the lake in the middle there's a few hostels and you go on a sand buggy oh and sweet yeah stay there for a couple of days that was really really nice oh, it sounds so good I so, just like immediately want to go travelling now yeah sounds good that picture's yeah. on my Instagram actually that, Ooh, we'll post a, that, then, that might be right. a nice one yeah because yeah. it's an oasis in the middle of a de in the middle of a desert basically insane. Um, so I stayed there for a little while and then I made my way up to Lima the capital yeah what did you think of Lima? Um, I, I like Lima. It was nice, but it, it was... I much preferred Cusco. 
to be honest. Lima, though, there wasn't as... Um, it was much more like a city and to see Fast and the Furious, you know? I went, oh, really? Yeah. It was more like, you know, shops and built up and it was very westernised, whereas uh, Cusco for me was more cultural, really. But I went and saw Fast and the Furious 7 and it was uh, English with Spanish subtitles and they all applauded at the end. Aww. At the end of, at the, end <laughs> of the film? Do you remember that when we used to applaud yeah, at the end that... of film? It doesn't exist wow. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was really sweet. nice. Yeah. It was absolutely full and it was like 50p for a film. Yeah. yeah. Did wow. you feel like when you go there it's kind of like back in time for us but obviously completely different because it's a different culture uh, not in cities like that it's very westernised it's mm. similar to a lot of the cities in Europe and stuff okay. and the Spanish influence obviously is very strong but I think places like Cusco and Iquitos are just totally different Iquitos for me was the most magical place I've ever been that's my favourite place ever really wow. mm. and I obviously did the detox but again I was very lucky I got into a really good hostel met a really good group of people yeah. I sort of spent time with them and I went into the jungle and there's some people who actually live out there there's two Danish guys uh, two English guys wow. uh, and they bought a, an air area and cut all the trees down made their own home and they just live there live on the land is this just a chance meeting with them yeah basically well i met them through i did six ayahuasca ceremonies what are they so ayahuasca is basically a brew that's made from specific vines of a plant Ah, and, okay, um, I was going to be kind of talking to you about similar things like this, actually, so it's going to lead on quite well. And the, the native Peruvians, it's from Peru, native Peruvians, historians don't know how they found out about it, but it's passed on through generation to generation. They call it a medicine, not a drug. It's kind of uh, very spiritual, and you go into a ceremony, and I was very lucky that a friend of mine went and recommended me a really good shaman, and the shaman holds the space and stuff. I'm sounding like one of them kids in a gap here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like one of them tosses. I'm not a tosser. <laughs> well, I am, but I don't want to sound not like that. Not a travel that. tosser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, sort of am, but um, so yeah, it was really amazing. So I met some really cool people doing that. A really amazing experience for me. Yeah. I'd recommend that. There's some places you can do it in England, but I don't think it's. Um, I've never done it in England. For it's not me, as authentic. I would no, say. I think part of it is you're, it's pitch black. You're in the middle of the Amazon. All the animals, the sounds and the wind's blowing it's just really really yeah. beautiful it was really nice and I also did some acupuncture which I've never done before oh wow okay um, there was a guy who's doing it uh, Volpe is half Peruvian half Chinese and one of the nicest people I've ever met really mm. lovely man and I tried booking in and he was fully booked everyone was saying oh Jim Carrey was here to see him last month he's like you can't get in he's going to be this star they're going to move him to wow. Hollywood so I mean I don't know if that's a sales pitch or what but I yeah. went and met him and he was just the most incredible gentle man and he every part of your body is a pressure point and he was feeling up my arm and he's sort of feeling the pressure points on my body and then describing my personality and things really? that happened in my life. No it way. It was like, incredible. It was really incredible. And then he said, oh, you've got some tension here and explained what it was and why I'd felt it. And I was like, how does this guy know? See, so, you know, I could really get into things like that. I like weird things. But were you cynical before and then... Uh, yeah, I, I had a real open mind about it. But you are a bit cynical. But I think some people would lie there and go, come on then, tell me what you know. Yeah. Whereas you have to open up as much as... he's feel in your arm and goes right that's uh you know anxiety for it could be one of many things mm. and you have to give as as much as as you can really yeah. to help him you know so mm -hmm. for me i had a couple of things that were like blockages in my yeah. life so i think i need to go see this guy <laughs> i think you'd really enjoy something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. so he he really just said you're harnessing onto that and obviously with the ayahuasca i tried to ex explore that as well because you know i sadly lost my sister eight years ago so that um, was something that was you know you never get over that but no. but it was you know everyone deals with things in their own way Definitely, yeah. so you know not to bring the mood down sorry guys no, that's right. but um, yeah, it was it, it was that thing where with the acupuncture he said he felt my arm and said oh you think about someone a lot and I was like really like, you know, and, I, and I sort of opened up to him and he was just saying I can feel it in your body the, mm. the, in your pressure points which is so fascinating to me because like you say I'm a bit not sceptical but I think oh here we go yeah. whatever so it was really like such a, an amazing thing for me I really really enjoyed that so I went to see him a couple of uh, three times oh wow and, um, and is it expensive to do something like that uh, it worked out about 35, 40 quid uh, time you and I always gave him a little bit extra but he was uh, him and the shaman who was the nicest person I've ever met you look into his eyes and he's just he's just the nicest Wisdom. kindest man he just give you a hug and give you yeah. you're just a really nice man and they never really asked for money they had like translators and stuff who'd say oh it's this much and you know the mm. westerners are all about money you've got to pay this and it's there and I said to him about money and he didn't want to touch it he just say oh, there's a draw you know leave me whatever mm. you know they were never they're not avaricious they're not doing it for the money they're doing yeah, it uh, for their own it was really nice whereas some of them 
I think some of the shamans, for every one good one, there's 10 chances yeah. who are trying to, if you go to the market stores, I'm looking to do ayahuasca and I'm looking yeah. for a shaman. My uncle, my cousin. and yeah. So you have to be quite careful. I was mm-hmm. very, very lucky in that I had a friend who'd been and recommended right yeah. person. So I was very lucky. So for someone that kind of turns up and does want to see a shaman or something, what would you recommend? Like, how would they go about it without being scammed? Um, I think there are some really good uh, retreats. I think there's some Westerners out there who are really, really taking things seriously and and have some amazing retreats you can google and and research but some of them are very expensive like uh, there's one that's like two thousand dollars for a week and they you stay on you know in the amazon uh, in their home or they they call it the farm Mm -hmm. and they feed you all week with their special nutrients and diets and i had an old geography teacher at school who said that he believed everything that you know there is on this earth can cure everything there is you know that Mm. we're exploring space but we haven't explored you know 95% of, 95% world, of the yeah. seabed, you know. Yeah, yeah. So there's things like that. So I think they very much believe that their medicines are made from trees and they don't have paracetamols, you know. They, yeah. they cut up a tree that. and leaves. I would definitely go for that rather but than But you know, ev- everything we buy in a pharmacy really comes from there. Of course, yeah. And so that's that's how they work and that's their mentality in the jungle. And we went fishing and we there's piranhas and all sorts. It, it was it was really amazing. It's very hard for me to describe. It has to be your experience. You have to go there and experience yeah. it yourself. And, you know, if you do these diets, you stay with them for a week and you know no sugar no salt and it's everything's organic honestly i about saying cliche i felt a lot lot better yeah and i felt really really good good with myself lost a lot of weight and stuff and then went to columbia and ruined it all (laughs) (laughs) amazing that's some really amazing stories there Uh, that's that's really good right so we were watching a program the other day called booze traveler okay and it was a peru special actually which was really good Uh and convenient he basically goes around and samples different beer different booze and all of that around the world around the world what a job what a job travel the world and drink alcohol it, it's man versus food, but the drink. alcoholic version. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's really cool. Um, but he was talking about a drink called Cañasso. Okay. Okay, have you heard of this? No. Well, I, there's a place in Peru called Pisco, and they do Pisco sours. Okay. I went to the vineyard, actually, and saw where it was made. Oh, right, okay. Old school, they're just stamping on it in their bare feet. But... Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the sort of vibe Similar. this is. The guy who was, like, tasting it on the programme said it tastes like gasoline. Right, I'm going to be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> um, so strong stuff. Um, but it's made in the Amazon with sugar cane as well. Okay. But they also put something in it. Which, if you'd drunk the drink, I was going to ask if you had eaten a monkey penis. <laughs> because they put a monkey penis in the drink as you drink oh, it. Oh, is that in... And it's bottled with that in it? I'm not sure. In the programme, it's in a cup and they just had it like as a stirrer. A monkey penis stirrer. What the poor monkey? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that was one drink. But then he went on to another place. He went to the to see the Alamos tribe. And they have a thing called spit beer, right? Wow. So what they do is they get potato from the Amazon rainforest that's like been growing there or fruit or quinoa or quinoa however you want to say it and they basically they put it in their mouth chew it to get the saliva out of the potato or whatever it is oh surely not spit it back out onto this pot and then they mix everybody's spit together and then they ferment it which creates a beer so it's called spit beer wow so it really is yeah. it really is kind of what, it's, how? what it says that is unbelievable so when you said with all the medicine and stuff and how organic everything is even their beer is <laughs> yeah <organic. laughs> that's too organic <laughs> that's, that's, that's too much that's... I'm one of these people that thinks I mean what you said sounded great earlier with the diet you're on but organic doesn't always mean good <laughs> organic yeah. can mean spit and it can mean shit yeah. as well like, you know what I mean that but, is true yeah, yeah. but um, yeah that it looks uh, disgusting. It was quite Spit repulsive, beer. but you know, when in Rome. <laughs> when in Rome. Um, right, so we're going to just wrap up finally. So every episode, we're obviously going to name it. We don't want to call it something boring like episode two. So Nick's come up with a few quirky names for nice. us to decide on what we want to call this episode. I heard a few of them about a month ago and nearly cried because they were so bad. Um, <laughs> but, well, yeah, no, they're gonna, funny bad. I'm going to run some names by you. Uh, they play on play on words kind of <laughs> names. And if you have any more, please. Um, I can't remember them. So I can't Please let me know. Them again. So, the first one. Dr. Peru. <laughs> <laughs> no? You don't have to say I like anything. It. Really? No. Okay. Here's looking at Peru. See, no, I didn't get these. Here's looking at you. Here's looking at you. Here's looking at Peru. Okay. And I didn't get obviously, it. Doctor Who. Dr. Peru. Doctor. Oh, see, no, I didn't get that. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I'll explain them all then. I was thinking no, Dr. No, no. Peru, just, Dr. Pepper. Just go through them. Nice to meet Peru. <laughs> 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 how about how Peru doing? Oh, they're getting worse. <laughs> they're getting <And> better. <laughs> my personal favourite. Peru, do you think you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the winner. Peru, do you? What was it? Peru, do you think you are? And every time I say that, I think of Peru, do, do you, you think, think you are? are? 
the sun oh. can't. Oh, I should have. I should have brought you an Inca Cola. I feel I had. What's I, an Inca Cola? Coca Cola make it, but it's like a. It's the, a really popular drink out there. They have obviously Coca Cola, but they have Inca Cola. It's like a cross between like Iron Brew and Coca Cola. Oh, oh, okay. I brought a bottle home. I should have brought it. I'm so sorry. Oh, send us that's a, all right. send a picture. Can I bring you? I'll bring you one in. We could have tasted it. Oh, um, that would have been good. But we we were gonna try and find some Cagnasso spit beer so we could try. That. Oh, cheers! Mm. You made your own. Here you go. <laughs> we made this last night. It's yeah. a special offering for coming to our <laughs> yeah. podcast. Amazing. Right. Well, thank oh, well. you so much for coming in today, James. That was really it's interesting. Been really, fun. really good. Oh, thanks. I feel like I've learned so much about Peru I hope our listeners have as well and um, I'm sure you'll be back on the show soon oh that's very you can kind of you. tell us about another country that you've I didn't been even get to tell you about the Coca Canyon <gasps> oh tell us go about on. that all we're right pre- last story of the podcast for time, but go on, tell us that quickly. was on the Peru hop. Uh, it's just this amazing incredible canyon and you walk around it and you're on a, a bus again I'm just on the edge of a cliff just driving around and uh, it's just I've shown you the pictures on Instagram but there's just some beautiful views and it's not like the Grand Canyon but it's um, a lot greener but again I'm just incredible really there's so much but, but to see is, in Peru yeah this is good because like me and Amy and most people think Peru and you think of Machu Picchu but yeah I'm sure there is a lot more to see which we just don't have any idea about so this is really interesting that yeah very much so I do think of Machu Picchu that's true yeah. but there's ruins and obviously the Incas really left their mark yeah. so the, yeah, so you have to go you'd really love it Definitely. we will, we will one day it's in the plans for next year I'd say yeah I, I hope so yeah but yeah, thanks for listening. This was episode two. I believe it's called Peru, Do You Think You Are? <laughs> and, uh, so thanks for James for coming on. And we'll see you next month, which I believe we're talking about Budapest. Yes, we are. Budapest and Hungary. As we've just got back from a trip there. So look forward to that next month. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks, Cheers. guys. Don't forget, you can get in contact on at Faux Podcast. That's Faux spelled P-H-O. Or what the Faux Podcast on Instagram. You can also email us whatthefoepodcast at gmail.com. <laughs>